Hey guys, my name is Luis and welcome back to the studio. In this video we will be talking about the basics of equalizing and how you as a beginner or as a amateur bedroom producer just like me can improve in equalizing. So an equalizer is a tool that you use to adjust the balance or volume between different areas in the frequency spectrum from an input signal, which can be for instance a piano or a guitar. And when you as a music producer think of an equalizer, you'll typically think of an equalizer as an x-axis with the frequencies and a y-axis with the balance. Um, although an equalizer can just be a simple bass, mid and treble knob that we find for instance on most guitar cabinets. But today we will be looking at a parametric EQ that we can adjust with different bands, um, different filters and so on, you know, to really understand the basics of it. So to understand what a frequency is, we must know that a sound wave consists of an x-axis with frequencies and a y-axis with amplitude or volume. Um, and then the higher frequency, the faster the sound wave is moving, which is also called hertz. If we look at a typical equalizer from a lot of doors, we have them ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz, which is the relative human limit of hearing. So the amplitude or balance um, depends on which equalizer you are using. Some equalizers are more aggressive than others and you really need to be equalizing with your ears, not your eyes. So that is a big mistake a lot of new producers make that, that they can see they are doing something and then it is just it. Um, but some equalizers are very aggressive, um, which means that you very, very quickly um, can get the feeling of, oh, this is too much treble or I just pulled out all of the bass. Um, you really need to look at, okay, which equalizer am I using? For instance, the Fruity Parametric EQ2 is a very aggressive equalizer, while the Ozone equalizer is not that aggressive. For instance, if we turn the Parametric EQ down 6 dB, um, Graphically, that looks the same as the ozone minus 3 dB. So you really need to use your ears, not your eyes. Really important. So we have some different frequencies areas in an equalizer. The first one is kind of from 20 to 60 hertz. This is where we have our bass frequencies, you know, the sub bass frequencies and part of the lower kick. Then we have the 60 to 200 hertz, which is kind of where the bass are. And also if you have low end of vocals, for instance, male vocals. And then we come to one of the most important areas. We have the 200 to 600 hertz, which is where all the low mids are from most instruments, from most vocals. And also, if you have heard a lot of producers talking about muddy mixes, so this is where the problem usually will be. If you have a lot of energy going on in the same area, you will also have to clean up a lot. So if you want clarity in your mix, you not only want to look out for the high frequencies, you also want to look out for the low frequencies and really need to not go into frequency masking. Um, and the next important part is the 600 to the 3000 Hertz, which is kind of where the human ear is most sensitive. So this is where you want maybe the lead, you want the vocal, maybe you have a solo guitar. You don't want a lot of um, bright shining through elements here at the same time, you really want one or two that the listener really, really notice. And then we have the 3000 to 8000 hertz, which is where most clarity um, is placed. And also this can be a very, very harsh area if it has been mixed wrong. You can really get the feeling of having a knife in your ear. Then we have above 8000 hertz, which is kind of where you have the air in your mix or the top end treble when you really want to give it space. So these are kind of the different frequency areas in your parametric EQ. Um, and you can control the different areas by using different bands. Um, and these bands use filters. And some of them are, for instance, high pass filters. And a high pass filter cuts out the low end and lets everything above the filter through. Meanwhile, a low pass filter cut out cuts out all the high end and lets everything below the low pass filter through. Then we have a bandpass filter or a bandpass filter. A bandpass filter is kind of in the middle, some sort of huge bell that you have. It is, for instance, great if you have some pads laying in the background that you don't want too many sub frequencies or too many high frequencies. Then we also have 
probably the most common it is a bell filter or a peak filter a bell filter is kind of a bell um, that you can boost or cut anywhere you want to in the frequency area we also have a notch filter and a notch filter is kind of where you cut out some annoying or disturbing frequencies in your parametric EQ. For instance, if you have a guitar and you have a resonant frequency that is just annoying, you don't want it in your mix, you can cut it out. Um, this is kind of a combination of a high and low pass filter at the same time. And lastly, we have the high shelf. If you use a high shelf, you can boost or cut everything uh, right for it. And if you have a low shelf, you can boost or cut everything left for it. And again, the way that you control these filters is by using the bands within the equalizer, and some equalizers come with more bands than others. You will probably also hear the, the term Q value, and the Q value determines the width or how narrow your, for instance, bell will be. Um, and the higher Q value, the narrow bell you will have, and the fewer frequencies are affected at the same time. You can also adjust the filter slope, um, for instance, when you have a high pass filter or a low pass filter. Um, you also have the option to use mid side equalizers and left right equalizers, which lets you kind of control different areas of the stereo imaging field at the same time. But when you have been producing for a while, you'll kind of figure out that you need one equalizer in one situ situation and you will need another in another situation. But I guess this is basically everything you need to know to get started. Let me know if you have any comments, suggestions or questions in the comments down below. Leave a like. If you like the video, I will make more videos like this in the future, so make sure to subscribe. I'll see you. Goodbye.